Pal World is undeniably clunky, misses some important quality of life features, and reeks of early access in so many ways. Combat can feel infuriating and unsatisfying, especially when using melee weapons. Player movement feels stale and can completely crumble when moving over some of the current terrain. Being able to scale entire cliff faces is undoubtedly a nice implementation, but is far from feeling smooth. The dodge roll should feel great to use as a way to make the player feel proud of their dodging ability, but instead feels incredibly flat. Running around on ground mounts initially feels awesome, until you try and scale any rocks or terrain. As soon as I flew for the first time, my thought was, this feels like shit. Although again, having access to flying mounts as early as you do is crucial for the pace of the game and makes open world exploration much more enjoyable. The missing quality of life features are spread across a few important areas such as information, inventory and storage management. And finally, the game balance, especially on hard difficulty, makes no sense. I feel like I shouldn't be getting one, two, or even three shot by pals many, many levels below me, and the damage dealt by some of the sources you have available to you definitely doesn't feel right. Despite all that, its popularity is indisputable, its sale numbers are insane, and the effort required to reach its current endgame will make sure this game has legs for at least another few weeks, but probably a lot more. Palworld reminds me of a game like Borderlands 2. Borderlands 2's movement, gunplay, and quality of life pale in comparison to not only modern games, but Borderlands 3 as well. When I play Borderlands 2, it's clear that I'm playing an inferior product in a variety of ways. However, every other element of Borderlands 2, its story, characters, writing, progression systems, difficulty, itemization, and endgame content, among others, are all at a high enough level. I mean, shit, some of them are even at a series peak here that the lackluster movement gunplay and quality of life have no negative impact on how compelled you are to actually play the game. This is how I feel about Palworld. All of the problems I have with it that I mentioned at the beginning, while certainly present in gameplay, aren't enough to dissuade me from playing. Palworld's premise as a creature collector needed to be the strongest element, and that element needed to connect nicely with the open world that you have to play in. Thankfully, both the creature collection and the open world merge very nicely and are undoubtedly the strongest elements of the game. While I do think open world activities are quite bare, there's still a decent amount to dive into between bosses and collectibles. While catching the different pals is at first a leisurely activity, it becomes more of a challenge later on, which I think suits the direction the game should go in, but some balancing changes are definitely needed. And then of course there's the utility of the pals themselves. I like that you're given reasons to catch each pal, whether it's simply for XP, or because it's new, or mainly because it has some currently undiscovered utility to you. Some pals will be mostly useless in combat, and in the base as well, but I've found that the majority have at least some prowess during combat, and at least some base utility. I could go deeper, but this game is deserving of a much more complex discussion than I can provide in this quick video, and it's probably deserving of that discussion once it hits 1.0. Essentially, the aforementioned systems being the strongest ones are to thank for keeping Palworld afloat, even while it's weighed down by others. I think the biggest thing Palworld needs right now, at least for me personally, is balancing changes. Having played most of my time on hard difficulty, it's been clear that something is wrong in a few different instances, and this persisted when changing some settings to make things more fair for us, although to a much lesser degree. And I say it needs balancing changes mainly for the pace. You don't want to be shoved up against a wall, which I can feel I'm on the cusp of multiple times now at 17 hours in. <sighs> All that said though, Potential is the word I would use to describe Palworld. It is a word thrown around way too much in video games, but this time I mean it more than any time I've said it in the past. From here, however, it would be a big task for the developers. For me, they need to rid the game of most of the clunk, add the necessary quality of life that you see in most survival games, create new opportunities for players in the open world, and then balance the game to perfection. Those are the things that would elevate this game to a point where I'd be happy to give it something like a nine or 10 out of 10, but only then. The additions of new technologies and pals will come, don't worry about that, but those things will not add nearly as much to the pedigree of this game as what I just mentioned. But I seriously do hope that Pal World reaches its potential because I think that potential is pretty insane. Keep in mind that I've only played 17 hours and most of that has been on default hard difficulty settings and I've been playing with three other friends. This video was made with the opinions that I've gathered from that experience. Many people are throwing around opinions on Power World right now, including me, but I feel it's very important to keep in mind this is an early access product and things are destined to change. Hopefully I provided opinions that will remain relevant for that early access period and ones that resonate with you. 
Hopefully by the end of this early access period, a lot of the problems I've had and the opinions that I've shared are entirely irrelevant and the game is in an entirely different state of excellence. I hope you've enjoyed. Have a great day and I'll see you later.